Hello, my name is Andrew Van Slars, and this video is an introduction to Riot.js, a lightweight, React-like UI library that allows you to create your own custom tags. In this introductory video, we will cover how to get Riot installed and up and running on your page, how to create and compile a custom tag, how to get data into your tag and how to use that data in expressions, and how to create a tag that allows user interaction through a basic form. Now let's get our environment set up and get into the code. Let's take a look at my initial setup. I'm using Atom as my code editor, but use whatever tool you're most comfortable with if you're going to follow along. I've created a root directory for the project and have Atom pointed at that. I also have a terminal window open to that root directory. And of course, I'm running Chrome so we can see the results of our work. Let's do a little bit of setup and then we can get into the code. You will need Node installed so we can install modules through NPM. If you don't already have that set up, you can do that right on nodejs.org by clicking the green install button. Let's install some Node modules with NPM. First, we want to install the Riot CLI by typing in npm install g riot. And this is going to give us the command line interface we need to compile our tags. We'll also be using a simple HTTP server to serve up our page. We can set that up by typing in npm install g http hyphen server. And if you don't already have Bower set up, you can add that by running npm install g Bower. And now with Bower installed, we can add the Riot.js files to our project by running Bower install Riot. And you'll see that this has created a Bower components directory in the project. Now the Riot.js files are available for us to use. Now that we have all of our files in place, let's take a quick look at the index.html file that we'll be starting with. As you can see, it's a basic HTML page. There's a heading one, it's just static content. Then I have a script tag that points to the riot.min.js folder inside the Bower components. And then there's an empty set of script tags that we're gonna to use to add our own code. Let's fire up the server we installed a moment ago by typing in http server and now that our server's running, let's load our page in the browser. And our page should load right up. Now I'm just going to keep the web server running and open a new tab in the console so we have that available to run our commands when we get to them. Let's get started creating our first custom tag. First thing we need to do is create a file to store our tag definition. So I'm going to add that to the tags directory. And I'm going to name my tag hello-world.tag. We'll start by wrapping the definition in the tag we want to create. Now that we have the shell for our tag in place, let's give it some content. And that's enough to give us a basic tag definition. Riot tags are compiled into JavaScript. There is an option to include this compiler and allow the compilation step to happen in the browser, but for these examples, we're going to pre-compile our tags. For this, we'll use the Riot CLI that we installed earlier using npm. We'll start by typing in the Riot command, and then we'll tell Riot what to compile. And we'll see that Riot has taken our hello world.tag file and created a hello world.js file in the same location. Let's take a look at the result of that compilation. Our JavaScript file contains a simple call to the tag method that Riot provides. Its first argument is the name of our tag. The second is a string that represents the template for our tag. And the third is a function that takes an options argument. Now let's wire up our page to use our tag. Back in index.html, I need to add a script tag that points to hello world.js. I'm 
We also need to add our tag to the page. And finally, we need to add a call to the mount method that Riot provides to tell it to load the tag onto the page. Now that we have our tag defined, our script references are in place, and we've made a call to Riot's mount method to tell it to load onto the page, let's take a look at it in the browser. And when we refresh the page in the browser, we should see our Hello World content from our custom tag. So we've created a custom tag, but it's only displaying static content, so it's not very useful. Let's look at how we can make our custom tag a little bit more interesting by passing it some data to display. Let's say I want my tag to take a property called greet with a name to display as part of our message. It would look like this. Now my tag has a greet attribute and I've passed it the value John. And what I'd like is for the output of the tag to say hello John rather than hello world. In order to use this value as part of the display, we'll need to update our tag file to use an expression. In my hello world tag file, I'm going to replace world with an expression that calls ops.greet. If you remember from earlier, ops is the name of the argument that's passed into the function that we saw as the third argument in Riot's tag method. Now that we've added our expression, Let's make sure all of our files are saved and we can recompile our tag. We'll run the same riot command that we did before, passing it tag slash hello world dot tag. It'll replace our JavaScript file. And now when we look in the browser, we should see hello John. And as you can see, it's as easy as creating an attribute and adding an expression to pass a value into our custom tag. We can also pass data into our tags using riot's mount method. If we remove the greet attribute from our hello world tag and then update our mount method to pass in an object that has a greet property, we should see our tag render with the message hello Joe. And it works. Note that we didn't do a recompile this time. Nothing in our tag definition changed. We just passed in the value a different way. Now let's say we had a reason to put two of these tags on our page. I'm going to copy the hello world tag, paste the second one, save my file, and refresh the browser. And we should see two hello Joe messages printed out. When Riot mounts the tag, it's going to pass this data into each instance. If instead of passing data in the mount method, we gave each instance of this tag its own attribute, we should see two different values. So let's check that out. I'll remove the value that I'm passing into mount, and then I'm going to give each tag a greet attribute. And again, I'll refresh the browser. And you'll notice that each tag prints out the value that was passed to its specific greet attribute. Now let's say we have a third instance of the hello world tag, but this time we're not going to give it an attribute value. When I look at that in the browser, my third instance just says hello and has no name. If I go back and pass an object into the mount method again, my tag that doesn't have an attribute will use this as the default value. You'll notice that my third tag says hello Joe. It's pulling that value from the mount method. And the first two tags are using the attribute value. So passing this object into the mount method is a great way to set default values. And then you can override them with attributes on specific tags. Showing data is helpful, but if you're going to make anything interactive, you'll need to accept input from users as well. Let's create a new tag that incorporates a form. To stick with our super simple Hello World theme, we'll create a tag with a single input that allows a user to type in the name portion of our greeting. Let's create a new tag file. And we'll call it helloform.tag. And the tag we're going to want to use will be called hello-form. Inside our hello form tag, we'll need a form, which we can define with a standard HTML form. 
and we'll give our form a single input. And we'll give it a name, greet. And in order to submit our form, we'll give it a button. And when we submit the form, we want a message to be displayed with the name that was input. So let's add a message. We're going to need to use an expression to put our name in. Now what we need to do is define the action for our form, because right now it won't do anything. And we need to set up our mapping from our hello input to the this.greeting variable that we put in our expression. To do this, I'm going to add a set of script tags at the bottom of my tag. And inside the script tags, I'm going to define a function that will act as my form's event handler. Inside this function, I'm going to take the greet input value and assign it to this.greeting. And now I need to attach this function to the form as its submit handler. Now that our tag's set up, we're going to need to compile it so we can add it to our page. Since we now have multiple tag files, let's look at a way to use the compiler to compile all of our tags into a single JavaScript file. When we run the riot command to compile a tag, our first argument is the source. We can pass just a directory name, and riot will find all of the tag files in that directory and compile them all to JavaScript. So let's run the riot command and point it to the tags directory. I want to make the second argument the name of my output JavaScript file so that all of my tags end up in a single output. And when I run this, it'll take all of the tags in the tags directory, compile them into JavaScript, and the output will be in all.js. And you'll see it's created our new file. And we can take a look at that. And you notice that the hello form tag definition has our say hello function defined inside of it. Now that we have our tags all defined in a single JavaScript file, let's update index.html to point to our new JavaScript output. Now that we've updated that, we're also going to need to reference our new tag on the page. And we'll need to tell Riot to mount our new tag. And now that we've done that, let's take a look in the browser and see our new output. And you'll see that we now have a single input, our button that says hello, and the start of a hello message. I can put a value in the form. And when I submit the form, it'll update my output message. You'll notice that even though it took my value from the form and put it into my output, it still left that value in the input. Let's go clean that up. Back in my tag definition, I'm going to update my function to clear out this dot greet. And I'll save that. Now that I've made an update, I'm going to need to recompile my tags. So this time, let's tell Riot to just watch the tags directory. And every time it sees a change, I'm going to have it recompile the JavaScript. We do that by running the same command we used last time, and this time we'll pass it the W switch for watch. It'll recompile the tags, and you'll notice that it now says it's watching for all the files with a tag extension in the tags directory. And with our tag recompiled with our new change, let's go to the browser and take a look. And that didn't work. Let's take a look at why. OK, the no reason that didn't work is I assigned the empty string to greet instead of greet.value. So let's update that. Save it. You'll see that our watch recompiles our JavaScript. 
I can refresh the browser, type in a name, and now it updates my message and clears out the form field. All right, when we look at this new tag that we created, you might notice that my output is essentially doing the same thing that my original hello world tag does. The nice thing about Riot is that it allows us to compose our application by nesting tags. So I'm going to replace this H3 with my greeting and pass it an instance of my hello world tag. When I save that, the watch should recompile it. And when I go back to the browser and refresh, I can go in here and I can pass it a new name and it still works. But the nice thing about this is if I decide I want to change my hello world tag, so we make that a little bit smaller by changing it to an H5. I save it, the watch recompiles. When I refresh, it'll be updated everywhere that I reference hello world, including inside of the hello form tag. Everything still works. And now that hello world tag allows me to make changes in one place and they get cascaded through wherever it's used. All right, let's make one more change to our hello form tag. And I'm going to go in here and I really don't want my hello world tag to be displayed when all it says is hello. So I'd like to hide this until the this dot greeting value is populated. Riot gives us a built in attribute called show. And we can pass that an expression. This expression will look at this dot greeting and if it's a falsy value, so undefined or null, then show will hide our element. And if it's a truthy value, meaning it's populated, hello world will display the message. So let's take a look at that. I can refresh the browser and you'll see that hello is no longer displayed. So if I put a name in here and submit my form, it'll populate this dot greeting and display the hello world tag. One of Riot's strengths is brevity. It has a very small API, a small file size, and it allows us to write succinct code. So let's go look at our tag one more time and clean it up a little bit. My say hello function that I'm using as an event handler can be shortened by removing the function and the call to this. And I can save this. It'll be recompiled. When I refresh my browser, I'll see that it doesn't work because I forgot the parentheses. So I can shorten my function to say hello, opening and closing parentheses. My tags will load and my form will still work. The other thing I can do with Riot is leave out the script tags. When I recompile that and go back to my browser and refresh, you notice my hello world tags still show up and I can type a name in here. and my form still works. If we look at our compiled JavaScript, even though I left out the this and the keyword function, Riot's compilation step put it back in for me. I like to put the script tags in. I do like the abbreviated function definition syntax though. So I'll keep that in there. We didn't do anything too crazy, but this is a good starting point. If you were looking for something more advanced, I do plan to create more videos like this and to continue adding to the complexity as the videos progress. Thanks for watching. And if you have any feedback or suggestions, I'd love to hear what you have to say.